Okay, so I will be talking about um, exercise associated muscle cramps. Um, and I will talk about the two main theories that are discussed today. Um, and mainly if uh, we should put aside or not the electrolyte imbalance theory. So we know that exercise um, associated muscle cramps or uh, cramps, uh, the clinical definition is that they are a sudden, painful, strong, involuntary muscle contraction that occurs when the muscle is in a shortened state. Um, it, it has a short duration, one, two, three minutes normally, and it involves one muscle or just part of it normally. Um, it also, since we are talking about exercise, uh, it's they occur during or after exercise. Um, the literature says that it's consensual that the exercise associated muscle cramps have a neurogenic nature. They come from the nerves. And they say that because they resemble the voluntary contraction. Um, the, they resemble the voluntary firing of alpha motor neurons, of lower alpha motor neurons. And also, they say that fasciculations occur before and after the cramp, the exercise-induced cramp. When I say cramp, it's always exercise-associated muscle cramp. Um, also, uh, we know in medicine that muscle cramps are mainly related to motor neuron disease, not neuropathy, not myopathy, I mean. So they have neurogenic nature, they come from the nerves. But the controversy here that I found in, the, in this review is that the origin of the, the cramps could be from the central nervous system, and by central I mean by, uh, could come from the lower uh, s uh, motor neuron, the spinal motor neuron, and that's related to the neuromuscular imbalance theory that I will speak um, further ahead. Or the origin of the, the cramps could be from the nerve terminals, from the periphery, not central uh, um, origin. And that, that peripheral origin is related to the dehydration electrolyte theory. So talking about what is the dehydration electrolyte theory. Um, so they say that when you sweat, you lose water and sodium, okay? Sweat is hypotonic in relation to plasma. So what happens is that plasma gets hypertonic and fluid comes from the intravascular space. When fluid comes from intravascular space, um, there is a contraction of the interstitial space, space and also exercise-related metabolites accumulate within the interstitial space. We get potassium, sodium, acetylcholine, lactate, a lot of um, byproducts accumulate in the interstitial space. And they say that um, that um, accumulation and mechanical contraction causes a spontaneous discharge of the peripheral nerves that induces the cramp. So that's the dehydration electrolyte theory. Um, uh, theory. Okay. So there is another theory uh, that was uh, brought to us uh, from uh, uh, Schwellness. I don't, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. In 97, uh, I believe. Um, and this states that with repetitive muscle uh, exercise, whether being maximal mus muscular contraction or long duration exercise, there is the development of muscle fatigue. And that muscle fatigue causes, increases the excitatory efferents, excitatory peripheral efferents to the lower motor neuron and decreases the inhibitory efferents from the peripheral uh, muscle to the lower motor neuron. What happens is this, is that uh, in red, we see the common myotetic reflex or the stretch reflex. You tap the tendon and it stretches. This is an excitatory efferent to, to the lower motor neuron. And this uh, reflex is increased. What, what this theory says is that with fatigue, this reflex is increased. And so the motor neuron is being excited. Also, the inverse myotetic reflex or the Golgi tendon organ reflex states that that states uh, uh, that when you stretch a muscle too much, it inhibits the nerve. This reflex is inhibited with fatigue. 
So we have less inhibitory efferents to the alpha lower motor neuron. All this causes an hyperexcitation and the discharge of the alpha motor neuron causing the cramp. So related to this, um, many studies that support this neuromuscular imbalance theory say that uh, the um, type 1A efferent, that is the stretch reflex or the muscle spindle reflex, uh, is increased in fatigue because of, uh, mainly because of these two works done by Nelson and Hutton. But these two works are very, very uh, commonly cited in uh, uh, articles that support this theory. And they, these works, what, what Nelson and Hutton have done is that when the muscle fatigue is induced, um, okay, so when muscle fatigue is induced, you, s you see that the firing rate of the type 1 efferent rises. This is the firing rate. This is the control. This muscle is not fatigued, this is fatigued, and with fatigue, when you stretch the muscle, it responds more, it contracts, it has a, um, a higher reflex. On the other, on the other um, when testing the Golgi tendon organ reflex here, uh, after fatigue and after inducing the, the stretch, after making the stretch, there is no firing rate from the muscle that was fatigued. So there is no inhibition to the alpha motor neuron when there is fatigue. So the two theories say, um, both theories say that stimulation of spinal nerve efferents produce muscle cramps, whether by spontaneous peripheral nerve activity, that is uh, in relation to the dehydration electrolyte theory, or due to alpha motor neuron hyperactivity, neuromuscular imbalance theory, this one, the central and peripheral theories. So we should ask, could the cramp occur uh, with a peripheral nerve block? Well, um, Mineto has, has tested it. Uh, he did a nerve block, a peripheral nerve block with the lidocaine. It blocks the sodium channels. So no information goes to the to the spinal medulla or comes from the spinal medulla to the muscle. The muscle is isolated here. And then he stimulated the muscle to induce a cramp. So could the cramp still be induced? Well, the cramp could still be induced, but it did not resemble a real cramp because it was very short, only one to five seconds. It, the, the contraction force was much lower and it needed higher stimulation threshold frequencies. Induce the cramp with electrical stimulation. So the, and the, the electrical, the EMG um, record did not resemble the cramp discharge. So probably it was not the same cramp. Uh, it was not a real cramp, if you could say that. So it seems that the spinal loop must be intact for the cramp to occur. This is in support with the central theory, with the neuromuscular imbalance theory. And many studies say that um, with fatigue, we get more, uh, more stimulation, more excitation from muscle spindles. They excitate the motor neuron. We get inhibition of the Golgi tendon organ in the myotendinous junction. It inhibits less the motor neuron, and also we get peripheral receptors, peripheral pain receptors, nociceptors that are stimulated. Pain may excite also the um, alpha lower motor neuron and may also uh, contribute to the cramp. So could we also integrate the dehydration electrolyte theory in this? Could we say that the mechanical stimulation and the uh, chemical irritation of peripheral nerves, could they stimulate peripheral, could they cause a stimulation of peripheral nerves that would go to the alpha motor neuron, contributing more to the hyper excitation of alpha motor neuron, just like it is said in the neuromuscular imbalance theory? Well, we know that the um, sports drinks that contain electrolytes 
and also carbohydrates, they delay the cramp onset. But they don't avoid it, they delay it. We know also that um, with maximum or near maximal isometric muscle contraction, the interstitial muscle potassium concentration increases. Potassium is a major um, um, put membrane potential determinant. We know also that crampers, some study says that crampers tend to lose more sodium in the sweat, like salty sweaters tend to have more cramps. But against this uh, are more recent studies that say that serious hypohydration, that means 5% uh, weight um, loss after the exercise, does not alter the cramp susceptibility in the non-fatigued muscle. If the muscle is non-fatigued and you lose a lot of water, uh, a lot of weight in this case, uh, it will not alter the cramp susceptibility. Also, there is no difference in plasmatic sodium concentration or magnesium, potassium or calcium between athletes that had crampers and non-crampers. Um, this was tested just before, in this case, uh, uh, 50, uh, 56 kilometers run, the, uh, the ultra marathon, and they found no difference. So, if uh, serious hypohydration does not alter, also s uh, electrolyte concentration is not different, why is it that electrolyte um, and carbohydrate beverages alter the cramp uh, or delay the cramp onset? Well, could we say that cramps could be also influenced by supraspinal centers? There are some studies that suggest that just the, the pink pickle juice, pickle juice ingestion could delay the cramp, uh, uh, could uh, delay, could, uh, sorry, could um, shorten the cramp duration. So it has an immediate effect just before, long before it is absorbed. Also, we know that just by mouth rinsing carbohydrates, we can, uh, that has ergogenic effects long before they get the blood. So is there some mechanism in the brain stem or in the brain or ahead or uh, above? We don't know. This is in accordance with the central government theory that it's been, it started to be talked uh, again. So current research tends to support the central origin of cramps. So we have the muscle, we have the tendon, we have the alpha motor neuron. We know Golgi tendon organ inhibits, muscle spindle stimulates, and we don't know what are the supraspinal influences. We don't know. And so the alpha motor neuron induces the cramp. Problems about this theory. The support for this theory relies mainly on cramp susceptibility to repetitive electrical stimuli, stimuli, thus reducing ecological value. So, um, and also, um, the, the studies that say that cramp is uh, provoked by fatigue, they say that by indirect evidence, they say that cramps are more common if you are not con well conditioned. They also say that if you run more in the first half, if you run faster than the others in the first half, is more probably, more probably you will get a cramp, even though you finished at the same time. And you know that maximal isometric contraction induces muscle cramps, so maximal, so like fatigue induces cramps, okay. There is only one study that says, uh, that try to study, so in fatigue muscle, is it harder to induce a cramp? This must, this, only this study that I found said that, no, uh, it is uh, harder to induce a uh, um, cramp in a fatigued muscle. This is before fatigue, this is after fatigue, and the threshold frequency was higher to induce the cramp. So we are not sure where we are. So what can we do for prevention? The last slide. Um, we know that regular consumption of CHO and electrolyte beverages Delay cramp onset, so we should continue doing that, of course, and increase intake when we tend to lose more water and more sodium. So also some studies show that pain can induce muscle cramps. So treat chronic pain syndromes that sometimes are hidden by athletes. They say they keep uh, taking NSAIDs 
and we don't know they have it. So three trigger points, overuse, chronic tendinopathies that may be sub-diagnosed. Learn optimum, optimum pacing strategies. And also avoid unnecessary muscle demand. Correct muscle imbalances. Improve your ge technical gesture. Um, reduce muscular tendon stiffness. And also, uh, it's, this is a big, big question, I don't know. Does central fatigue influence camp threshold? So could you, should we use techniques to attenuate the rise in core temperature, optimize muscle glycogen, etc.? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. We have time for one quick question on muscle cramps. Thank you for your presentation. Cramp can potentially be an uh, interest, interesting topic that we can uh, link to it. My question is, I guess the two theory will produce two different kind or two different location of cramp. If we talk about muscle fatigue, the cramp will be located only in the muscle exercising. If we talk about uh, reduction in the interstitial space due to dehydration, you might get cramp anywhere in the body. So where do you generally observe the cramp? Yes, well, in when uh, searching for literature, uh, you see that they say uh, cramp occurs in one muscle, but at least in American football, there is the whole body cramps. It can occur in the whole body. I don't, I've never seen an whole body cramp, I don't know. But it can happen. Maybe that one is more related to S very severe uh, electrolyte losses could it maybe it is but um, that's not a common cramp I'd say um, and we know but in in medicine that if you get uh, uh, if you lose too much sodium or too much potassium you get that's reflected in the muscles in the cardiac muscle and to get a uh, muscle cramp induced by electrolyte losses you should also get cardiac uh, alterations maybe because I it's uh, it it's probable but we don't see that so um but i think uh, the electrolyte losses might still be true thank you very much julian can i hand the microphone yeah, to you yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you very much thank you thank you for the presentation